Hey guys, my name is Sona, and today let's talk about the history of material science. You might be thinking, why are we talking about history if this is supposed to be a series on science and technology? Well, it's because A, this is a genuinely cool subject, and B, understanding the history of material science actually helps explain where we're going in the future. That said, let's rewind and begin all the way here, 6000 BCE, right during the Stone Age. The Stone Age is defined by the use of a specific material, stone. And you'll notice that many periods of human history are defined by the use of a particular dominant material. For example, following the Stone Age, we have the Bronze Age, from 1300 BCE to 1200 BCE in the Middle East, defined by the use of bronze, typically a copper tin alloy. Then we have the Iron Age, starting right around 1200 BC, where bronze is replaced and dominated by iron and carbon steel, particularly in weapons. The important lesson to take away from these three historical ages is that technology and by extension, human civilizations are defined and characterized by materials. And this is what makes material science and engineering so important. All technology is limited by the materials they are made with. So when we advance and improve those materials, we let technology advance as well. And this is the driving principle of material science. Now, let's fast forward to the middle of the 19th century, the height of the Industrial Revolution. Steel is the defining material of the age, as its use in industry and transportation, namely trains, is revolutionizing cities as they know it. As a result, by the 20th century, most universities had metallurgy departments, which focus on understanding metals and alloys, like steel. However, material science is about to undergo a major revolution, as polymers like nylon, teflon, and kevlar start to revolutionize technology. Natural polymers, like wood and rubber, have been used for centuries, but synthetic polymers, like polyethylene and polystyrene, began to become more popular, especially for use in commercial products. So, in the post-World War II era, as research and interest in polymers increased, researchers and scientists realized that material science was truly an interdisciplinary field in its own right. Instead of considering metallurgy or polymer science as completely different fields, they saw them as related subspecialties of a new interdisciplinary field called material science and engineering. Universities began to recognize this development, and in 1955, Northwestern University created the United States' first material science department. Today, the interdisciplinary view of material science endures, with the field expanding with more and more subspecialties as our knowledge and understanding of materials expands further. Some may say we are currently in the silicon or plastics age, considering the dominance of those materials in our daily lives. However, material science is an incredibly broad and nuanced field, with specialties like metallurgy, polymers, ceramics, semiconductors, composites, biomaterials, and nanotechnology, all making their impact on technology today. The quick pace of advancement in biomaterials and nanotechnology especially give hope for the prospects of material science in the future, as we continue to discover more about materials to expand the field, and by extension, human technology. And so, this has been a brief history of material science and engineering, and thanks for watching.